Well, good morning, everyone. This is a day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad and thankful for the rain. Although, oh Lord, like Tevi would say in Fiddle on the Roof, I asked for just a little. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, we'll probably get some more. We're down quite a bit. That's in the, obviously when I played in Fiddler on the Roof, I was um, a mad Russian. I was not, but I was not the Fiddler on the Roof. So anyway, true story, Kay. Uh, but anyway, those of you who are watching us today, glad you can join us. So at this time, um, Sheila will lead us forward in the announcements and beginning of our worship service. Good morning. Are there any announcements? Is there coffee hour today? Yes, there is coffee hour today. If not, then let's stand for our call to worship. We are here because we have heard the call of Jesus in our lives. We are here to challenge and support one another to rise up and follow. We are here because we want to be God's people. We come seeking to be moved, changed, and made whole by the spirit of the living God. Let us open our hearts to the moving of the spirit and prepare to leave this place as true disciples of Christ. Amen. Please join in our opening prayer. Amazing God, you have shaped the world in wonder and mystery. With thanks, we contemplate the unseen world with all of its realities. You have created us so that we live as citizens of worlds seen and unseen. Help your creatures to live so that your spirit may become visible in our actions and relationships. Through the grace of Jesus Christ, who shared our earthly life, amen. Our opening hymn this morning is Praise Ye the Lord, the Almighty. <laughs> Would you please be seated? Today I'm going to be talking about the topic of joy. Now I know I, one time Cindy had you come up here and leave them in joy, 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 so we can't do that one again, um, but uh, it's always been kind of in my, in my head and my heart because where is that joy? Down in our heart. And I think about joy, our God is a God of joy, a God of love. That is far more than a smile, which you're probably even intrigued by the message of my, uh, sermon, of my, my sermon topic today. But that gives us the freedom to confess our sins, our mistakes, our humanness, knowing that God loves us and God seeks for us to have joy, his joy. 
So in a spirit of confession, would you please join together with me in our prayer of confession. Let us pray. O oh Christ, if we carry the name Christian, we are signs of your presence. Yet we confess that we sometimes hurt people through our pride, rather than showing the way to the healing waters of your spirit. When we are discouraged ourselves, we are unable to be signs of the joy and the hope of your good news. Forgive us and give us grace to be earthly reminders of your love. Amen. Please hear the words of our assurance of pardon. Hear these words from Christ. My grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. So go forth in the power of the Almighty, who forgives you and loves you. Amen. take a few moments and greet each other in Christian love and for those of you who are watching today we give you, we pass our greetings and pass in the peace of Christ to you as well and a joyful hug
may be seated. Our Old Testament reading this morning is Psalm 130. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you, so that you may be revered. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than those who watch for the morning, more than those who watch for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is great power to redeem. It is he who will redeem Israel from all its iniquities. Our New Testament reading is 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 1 through 12. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the exiles in the dispersion of Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, who have been chosen and destined by the God the Father and sanctified by the Spirit to be obedient to Jesus Christ and to be sprinkled with his blood. May grace and peace be yours in abundance. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now, for a little while, you have had to suffer various trials so that your genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold, that though perishable is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy, for you are receiving the outcome of your faith the salvation of your souls. Concerning this salvation, the prophets who prophesied of the grace that was to be yours made careful search and inquiry, inquiring about the person or time that the Spirit of Christ within them indicated when it testified in advance to the sufferings destined for Christ and the subsequent glory. It was revealed to them that they were serving not themselves, but you in regard to the things that have now been announced to you through those who brought you good news by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven, things into which angels long to look. I thank um, Barb and Patty are kind of, kind of just doing the tech thing today. So. Um, but I think it's come to rock, paper, scissors as to who has to read those long scripture passages. So um, it's become kind of a joke, but you both do such a wonderful job. Proud of you guys. So, so I'm left with simply the gospel reading. And, and that, is, that is this thing. And wait a minute. Of course, you know me. I'm going to say quite a bit later. John, 15th chapter, verses 1 through 11. It's about the vine and, and branches right now. But it's all connected to what I'm going to be using as my primary text, which is the thing that Sheila just shared. I am the true vine, and my father is a vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word, and I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I abide as I abide in you. Just as a branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit. Because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown like a branch away that withers and are gathered and thrown into the fire and burned. But if you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish and it be done for you. My Father is glorified by this that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. 
As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said many things so that, you might, so that my joy may be in you and may that joy, your joy, be complete. And so all of that stuff I've just read in the gospel reading prior to this last verse, the last verse is really going to be the key to what we're focusing on today. So uh, may joy be our word for the day. So young people want to come up here with me, please. I'm going to need help from the bigger young people. All right. Hi, how are you, sweetie? How are you guys doing? Good. I'm going to put you to work. Hang on. You always wanted to tie somebody up, didn't you? Hey. <laughs> All right, here we go. And now you get your chance. <laughs> Mom and Dad are looking on. Where's the camera? So how are you guys doing today? Good. Sound like you kind of ran out of steam a little bit. So how are you doing today? Good. Good. All right. We've got a future choir opera singer here. Let's send him to, to voice lessons. Okay, today I'm going to do something a little bit different than what my message is. So it's a different kind of object lesson. So, um, Sheila, you want to help me with this for a second since you don't need to operate the camera. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna pick, you and Kalise are going to pick two people and put blindfolds on. So let's get two volunteers to come forward. Come on. Uh, let's get, let, maybe let's go with the, the older boys here. Okay. So, Carl, you want to have a blindfold put on you? No? You got something in your mouth anyway. That's probably a good idea. Oh, no, they don't want to. Oh, jeez. Well, you can, somebody can blindfold me. I don't care. So who wants to be blindfolded with me? And then, you want to be blindfolded? No? Any other adults want to be blindfolded? I don't know. Oh, he, come on up. All right. I always love it when overgrown kids like myself can do this. Okay, you get to put, stay right there so he's got a height on so just blindfold him and, and don't, no fair peeking, no fair, no fair peeking. And, and don't try not to move. Oh, he can see, look at that. All right, you can do me too, all right? I don't know how you can do that around this uh, Britney Spears microphone, but. Okay. They're going to make us do something funny like dance. <laughs> not with you. <laughs> okay. Um, can you see? No. I can't either. Uh, so we need somebody to guide us. Who wants to guide us? We need help. We need help. Who wants to help? <laughs> Nobody wants to help us. Well, you guys want to help us? Somebody help. Somebody help. Guide me down the, the hallway a little bit. All right. Oh, it's, uh, man, a big kid. All right. We getting married or what? Okay, let's. All right, let's just go back. Okay, somebody guide him too. Thank you. Okay, I done my part, so you you need to take him. Don't run him into anything, okay? All right. Okay, let's let's bring him back. Let's bring him back. Now you want to do it. Yeah, no, that's all right. You can take your mask off. Anyway, so you can go back to your seat. Thank you. <laughs> anyway. Okay, guys. So yes, we're only time to get we didn't get a standing ovation, but anyway. Thank you guys. Um, you know, one of the reasons we have faith is because sometimes life is really difficult and we don't know which way to turn. It's kind of like being blindfolded. And so we need people to help us. And one of the things we learn about helping other people, because there, there are people out there who really need our help. And so it might be, they might be in the dark, they may be able to see, because you've ever been in a dark room where you stumbled something? You ever stumble your foot? If not, you just watch and wait, right? So, but it's gonna happen. Yeah, Carl. So, what's that? Where's my what? Oh, ba oh my bandit thing? Oh, where? Oh, okay. Where's my bed? 
It's at home. <laughs> I feel like these older people know Art Linkletter. Uh, kids say the darndest things. Anyway, let's have a word of prayer so I can get out of this. <laughs> let's have a prayer, guys. Gracious God, we thank you that you come to us when we're kind of lost and kind of alone. Help us, God, to help other people and be aware that other people can use our help too. So as a people of faith and people of your love, help these young people, help all of us to do that. Thank you for helping out today. Yeah, they're the ones that need a hand, not us guys. So, <laughs> all right. I have to do something fun like that more often where I'm drafting other adults, so that's all good. Would you join me in a moment of prayer? God, may the words which I'm about to utter and a privilege that I now assume be acceptable in your sight. Amen. So you know me, I'm a storyteller, and I always try to incorporate or insert something very recent as well, which I've done today. Um, Angelica Guevara graduated from high school with a 3.9 GPA, which is pretty good, right? You know, I mean, we all know, yeah, our kids had a four-point plus or whatever. But that's, that's still an accomplishment, right? Especially given her circumstances. For any kid, that's pretty impressive. But for girls who overcome what Angelica has overcame, it's truly outstanding. Angelica came from a poor neighborhood in L.A., Los Angeles. Nobody in her family had ever graduated from high school before. And her parents struggled with poverty and alcoholism and Lord knows what else. And she was pressured to drop out of school and get a job to kind of support the family that really didn't have much money coming in. But Angelica had a brother who would not let her fail. Her brother, and I'm not making this name up, was the name was Jesus, or probably pronounced Jesus, but Jesus. Throughout her high school years, Angelica owned only one pair of shoes. And Jesus helped her nail the shoes on when they started to fall apart. I was just seeing something in, on, on the Olympics last night about the, the sneaker shoe fetish that people have in Japan. I was thinking, well, I've only got two or three pairs, so I don't feel so bad. When some people own thousands and hundreds. So I can't see how they afford that, but that's anyway. So, but she only had one pair of shoes, and, and, and Jesus helped nail her soles together when they fell apart. Huh, interesting metaphor, isn't it? In, in Guevara's neighborhood... Kids carrying book bags were often harassed by gang members. And Jesus put the word out that the street that if anybody messed with his little sister, they would have to deal with him. Whenever Angelica was tempted to quit, Jesus was there to encourage her. Today, Angelica is continuing to excel in her studies at UCLA. How does it happen that one person can overcome so much? Of course, we can't help in indulging a little play on the word of Angelica's story. She had a big brother named Jesus who helped her along the way. And guess what? You know where I'm going with this. So do we. Our lesson from the epistle I'm focusing on today is from 1 Peter. Now, we cannot totally be sure. There's very good evidence that he was, it came from the hand of Simon Peter. For 30 years, this former professional fisherman had been fishing for people. And he had not lost his enthusiasm for the work of the gospel. It was his passion. It had turned his life around. This is a letter to the church, churches that are now in Turkey. And the letter would be passed on from one congregation to the next. And it's, it's thought that Peter wrote this letter sometime around 64 AD. Uh, at that time, the vast Roman Empire was ruled by Nero. Of course, Dave, being a historian, probably knows that, who reigned from 54 to 68, roughly, A.D. Nero had a terrible name among Christians. He was a terrible name among Christians. With good reason. In the year 64 A.D., two-thirds of the city of Rome was burned by horrific fire. Many people thought Nero himself was responsible, thus giving us the, the you know, the, the, the little ditty that talked, you know, that that Nero fiddled while Rome burned. Nero needed a scapegoat. He chose Christians. They started the fire, he suggested. They started the fire. And so the empire began to persecute the Christians. Tradition says that both Peter and Paul died as martyrs under the rule of Nero. Peter is writing to encourage people 
who have been persecuted. I'm just I'm painting a picture, the climate here for you. The sits in Laban, we call that. People who are suffering, people who live in fear. But rather than focusing on their persecution, he focuses on something else. I would like to say resilience, but it's, it's really God's promise that leads to resilience. Rather than focusing on their trials, he focuses on their future triumphs. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, he writes to them, who according to his great mercy has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Does this sound like he's writing to those in distress? A living hope? Further on in this passage, he writes, even though you have not seen him, you love him. And though you do not see him now, but believe in him, you greatly rejoice with joy, inexpressible and full of glory, obtaining the outcome of your faith of your salvation, your souls. Joy, inexpressible? What strange language, I think, to use, don't you? To use with people who are undergoing all kinds of trial and tribulation and suffering. Joy inexpressible? What a strange expression for people who are trembling behind locked doors, wondering if they're going to be next. Joy inexpressible? What are we missing here? How can you have joy inexpressible and your world's being torn apart? A lot of people have that question, don't they? Let's begin here. Joy is not a surface phenomenon. Joy is something deep, something I would submit to you that penetrates the very soul at the very core of who we are as God created us. A woman by the name of Lucy Bregman relates the story of how she once went to a worship service where the entire congregation was told, now I'll never tell you that because I know people have bad days. I work in that world. Uh, if you don't have a smile on your face, you got the wrong religion and you shouldn't be here. Well, I don't think, Ron, we wouldn't have policy quite like that because we all know that, that things happen. We get bad news, all kinds of stuff, you know? But, but joy is one of those things that's deep down. Um, if you don't have a smile on face, you've got the wrong religion, shouldn't be here. Christianity is a religion of joy. Well, I would argue that it is, but I think it's kind of missing the point. Lucy fled that service in tears. She was in pain, and she didn't feel at that time like she could smile. And over the years that I've been a pastor, a lot of people come out of that kind of a crisis. I get that. I've gotten that for a long time. She was in pain, and she didn't feel like she could smile at that point. She was having difficulties and was looking for comfort and a support system. And instead, she was told she wasn't good enough for God because she wasn't smiling. Well, you know what? I mean, we've seen people with those fake smiles. Yeah, yeah, smile for the picture. We all know that, right? Um, someone caused Lucy to confuse this, the surface phenomenon of smiling for authentic joy. Joy is so much deeper, as I said. Obviously, life is very hard and full of heartbreak sometimes. We don't like smiling when we're going through trials. I'm a phony. But deep down, we can still have an unassailable joy undergirding and supporting us throughout, knowing that the outcome ultimately will be one with God, with hope, with life. There is supreme hope and joy. Smile and the world smiles with you. We all remember that expression, right? The old song. And to a certain extent, it's true. You know, stand in the mirror and smile, and pretty soon you're going to start to wear that smile. But, but I, I think a smile, there's more to that than that, you know, that, whole, that whole psychological kind of phenomenon. Now, I've been watching a lot of the Olympic coverage when I'm available, when I've been traveling or speaking, or like on Monday, of course, it's over today, but uh, I'll be doing a debriefing again in Dodge County tomorrow morning, so, uh, because things keep happening there, so not too much joy there, you might argue. Uh, but I've been watching the Olympic coverage when I'm home, and there are moments of disappointment, but there are also moments of joy. Not just happiness, but joy. Among the athletes, especially when they're shown a live feed of their families watching at home that are separated from them. I'll never forget the fastest man in water, and he indeed is, Caleb Dressel. When he was being interviewed and then given a live feed with his family back home here in the States, he was crying. I'm sure glad the commentator is saying, oh, it's a man, he's crying. I get really angry when people do that. Um, why do they do that? What's wrong with a man crying? 
Rosie Greer would cry. I don't think he would mess with his manhood. Um, his tears of joy in that exchange, I'll never forget the most. He was beyond words, but it was joy. It wasn't sadness, but it was joy. It's a good, it's a glorious infection. In business, it's especially important to smile, especially if you work in sales, right? People don't like to work with individuals whom they think can be unpleasant. I mean, on the one hand, saying, okay, you go to these seminars and smile. Hey, how you doing? Well, you know, there's more to it than becoming obnoxious the other way. Um, ben, Beth Wick, casting director for ABC, used to study audition tapes produced by aspiring actors and actresses. And at the beginning of these audition tapes, the actors tell who they are and who their agent is. Beth says she looks carefully at the way the actors handle the part of the audition tape to see if they give off friendly vibes. Flight attendants do that too. I don't know if you knew that. They're trained to do that. Her experience is that of a winning smile usually indicates that that person will be easy to work with. Other things being equal, she trains casting directors uh, and they, they find that they pick more than anybody else people with who have friendly faces. The Chinese proverb, Chinese have a proverb, a man without a smiling face must not open a shop. I expect to see that in a fortune cookie at some point. Antoine de uh, Saint Exupere is famous for his book, The Little Prince which was made into a movie, but he's written other charming works as well. And one of the stories is based on his experiences fighting in the Spanish Civil War, and it's called The Smile. Whether it is based in fact or not, I don't know, let's be honest with you. But in the story, Saint Exupere says that he was captured and imprisoned by the enemy. He was sure to face a prompt execution. He was horribly nervous and sad. He probed his pockets, hoping that the guard's search had not thoroughly been enough to deprive him of the cigarettes that he smoked, because he was under a lot of stress. He found one, and he asked a guard for a light. The guard could have taken it away from him, right? The guard had been studiously ignoring him up till now. And as the guard lit St. Exupery's cigarettes, he didn't take it away, their eyes met. In other words, there was human contact. Close up, either out of nervousness or habit, St. Exupery smiled at the guard. The guard, unable to look away, smiled in return. Now that he acknowledged his presence as a human being, the guard seemed compelled to say something to St. Exupery. And he asked if he had any children. And St. Exupery ex ex replied that he did. And they didn't confiscate those pictures, and he took out some of the pictures and was showing them of his kids. And guess what? The guard brought out his own pictures and showing his kids, his family. Ah, all of a sudden they became human to each other. The guards unlocked suddenly. St. Exupery's jail cell. Obviously this doesn't happen often enough. And he let him out and the guard snuck him through the back roads of town until he brought him to the outskirts of town at great risk to himself. And there he left him. St. Exupery was alive and free because of his smile. Even Mother Teresa understood the importance of a smile in her book, A Gift of God in 1975. She wrote, some people came to Calcutta and before leaving they begged me, tell us something that will help us to live our lives better. And I said, smile at each other. Smile at your wife, smile at your husband, smile at your children, smile at each other. It doesn't matter who it is, and that will help you to grow up in a greater love for each other. Smiling is important, as Mother Teresa said. It, it can even be, arguably, a religious duty if we're playing the role of ambassador. But it's not the same as joy. Joy is not the surface phenomenon. Joy comes from deep within. Joy, as Peter tells us in his letter to the church in Turkey, is knowing the power of the resurrected Christ of Christ's presence daily. Joni, some of you read her book, she's very famous, Erickson Tata, knows about joy. Quadriplegic, written a number of books, done a lot of speaking around the world, 
Physically impaired due to a diving accident, she had a prime excuse to wallow in despair. My life's over. I'm a quadriplegic. But she knows joy. Joni tells about being surrounded by a crowd of women in a restroom uh, during a break at a women's conference. And one woman said, oh, Joni, you always look so together, so happy in your wheelchair. I wish I had your joy. Several women around her kind of nodded in agreement. How do you do it, she asked. Joni glanced at the nicely dressed women around her, and she knew that the break would soon be over. How could she answer this woman's question in about 60 seconds? I tell you, I get asked questions like that sometimes, not quite like that, but can you say, tell us in 60 seconds or less, a pastor to do that? That's almost impossible. Pray for me. How could she sum up in a soundbite what had taken her three decades to learn? I don't do it, she said. That raised their eyebrows. In fact, may I tell you honestly how I woke up this morning? Several women leaned against the counter to listen. This is an average day, she, she breathed deeply. After my husband, Ken, leaves for work at 6 in the morning, I'm alone till the front door opens at 7 a.m. That's when a friend arrives to get me up. And while I listen to her make coffee, I pray, oh Lord, my friend will soon give me a bath, get me dressed, sit me up in my chair, brush my hair and teeth, and send me out the door. I don't have the strength to face this routine one more time. I have no resources. I don't have a smile to take, to take into the day. But you do, Lord. May I have yours? God, I need you desperately. So what happens when your friend comes through the bedroom door? One of the women asks. I turn my head toward her, says Joni, and give her a smile straight, straight to me from God from heaven. It's not mine, it's God's. That's very profound. And so she said, gesturing to her paralyzed legs, whatever joy you see today was hard won this morning. The women in the restroom were silent and, said Joni, it's the only way to live. It's the Christian way to live. So you're going through a difficult time right now. I know some of you are. Is it beyond our power to smile? I mean, perhaps, and that's okay. But you need to know that beneath the surface, deep down inside, where nobody else can see, Jesus is helping out. There's an inexpressible joy that is available to each of us in all circumstances. It's the joy of the resurrected Christ. So won't you ask him to give you his joy so that even if that smile never makes it to your face, it still resides in your heart. You got that joy, joy, joy where, Cindy? Down in your heart. So may Jesus help us in having that joy. Friends, today we gather in joy. Would you join me in a moment of prayer? Gracious God, we thank you for joy. Sometimes, God, we get smiles and happiness and giddiness confused with joy. But you teach us otherwise. Life has its dark moments. When we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, when we find ourselves in a deep, dark place, and we think, as the psalmist writes, we think that you can't find us, but you find us there and on mountaintops as well. For you are with us. Help us to be aware of your presence, of your joy, of your hope. Amen. I'd like to ask what prayers of joy or concern would you like to lift up this morning? Uh, I'll save whatever I've got for last. And Ron, we'll hear from you first. Here are our prayers. Thank you, Ron. Other prayers. Yes, Anna.
hear our prayers. Thank you, Anna. Thank you. Prayers of those of you who have some health-related issues, please know that you're never far from our thoughts and prayers. And um, I, as I mentioned it last week, um, a friend of mine, I saw him at the hospital, in Freighter Hospital, G.R. Manning. He, he's starting to look confused, but I married he and uh, Kathy, maybe, what was that, 22 years ago, Grace? It was like the week before I saw him. The week, But he's got metastatic cancer that's everywhere, and um, plus some other issues and on top of that. And so I uh, spent, he, he wanted to see two people, and I was one of those two people. So um, Kathy and JR are in my prayers. And so I said, if you feel like tuning in, you can probably get it at the hospital down at Freighter. So anyway, rejoice in seeing Kay, you know, uh, doing so well. And thank you for the thoughtful notes that you sent. You know, as far as I know, I'm doing okay, you know. Um, reports of our demise are greatly exaggerated, right? Like in a newspaper headline. So yeah, good to see you. Yes, Kay. And my extra remembers a young woman who's 21 years old, Kaylee Murray, who had breast cancer, who was in a plane crash in Hartford a week ago. She was only 21. Just to remember her family. And you guys need mercy. Here are our prayers. Thank you. Thank you. Um, there was another de double fatality in Dodge County. Uh, some of you are probably aware of that. And yeah, you're probably aware and wondering whether I would be asked to help out, and I will be doing a debriefing for that wrong way driver head on. Driver's killed, the wrong way driver, the other. So, but Dodge County, uh, first responders everywhere, but Dodge County seems they're really getting hammered this year. So, as some of you are aware, so I'll be back over in Dodge County. Will not be in Mayville, so, you know, I can't check out the bowling alley. I'll be in Juneau. So anyway, but uh, so Christ in your mercy. Also, this is, I missed the announcement time, but it's also a joy. Uh, there's something called the, the National Night Out. It's, it's um, Germantown's holding it, and all the communities have been having it. Germantown's got a really big one this year. It's going to be with the Sheriff's Department and, and police and a lot of volunteers. It's going to be at Fireman's Park. On Tuesday from 5 to 8, you can get eats, you can see entertainment, um, get to see me walk around in uniform, and I'll be handing out food and doing all kinds of stuff. So if you're there from 5 to 8 on Tuesday, it's, uh, kids get stuff for their bikes. It's, it's a part of whole community safety and, you know, just back and forth giving to the community, too. So, so if you're in town, want a hot dog, I can probably peddle a hot dog to you or something like that. So if you're looking for something fancier, don't count on it. But that's... Tuesday at Fireman's Park in the new pavilion. So, anyway. Christ in your mercy, would you pray with me? Gracious God, we thank you for joy. We thank you for happiness. God, we shudder to even want to begin to imagine what life would be like with no joy. We pray, God, for those who have lost that. It's there, but it's locked off from them. People in despair, people seeing that there's no future, no hope. Help us, God, to be ambassadors, to be those who, through simple acts of love, can bring joy to other people. For those, gracious God, who are struggling with difficult diagnoses right now or recovering from surgeries, we pray for your great physician's healing touch and your great physician's healing peace and joy to support, to undergird, to lift up into the light of your love. We thank you, God, that you are a God of hope, a God of joy, a peace, a God of love. And heart to heart, given that we know that God we join together in praying the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples by praying ourselves. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Freely and richly has God blessed us. We have already shared our gifts of, of love and our morning offering uh, that we gave on the way in. So at this time, we will enjoy uh, Mark's music of dedication and celebration, those gifts and that generosity. Gracious and always loving God, we would ask you accept these, these gifts we offer up to you. Grant that the causes to which they're devoted be causes of love given to your glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray, we share, and we live. Amen. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
steadfast, strong, and true. Oh, he will guide you in all you do. Oh, now in love and show you believe. Reach out to others so all the world can see. God will be there. 